Many people living in neighboring Ghana rely on fishing to put food on the table each day. But big international factory ships frequently enter coastal areas, tearing the local net, polluting the sea and overfishing the waters. Experts estimate that these illegal practices off the coast of West Africa cost the affected countries around 1 billion US dollars per annum. And this also threatens both the fish stocks and the people that depend on them. It's a bright morning on the shores of the Atlantic in St. James Village in Ghana. As usual, the fishermen are hard at work. 21-year-old Daniel Kofi is one of them. He and his brother Stephen seek out what's left of the precious fish stocks beneath the ocean surface. Oh. The most common types of fish here are red snapper, tilapia and small sharks. Tilapia fetch the highest price. They chant and sing as they draw their nets. The brothers believe that aside from distracting their minds from the heavy work, the singing lures the fish into the nets. Still, today's catch is not very impressive. They say the competition from foreign trawlers is unfair. The Chinese are a real problem. They explode bombs underwater and then catch all the fish. I know the Chinese people bring their boats here and lay their nets, but I can't get another job. Fishing is my only option. Back on the shore, the daily catch is either sold fresh or dried in the sun. Fish is an important source of protein for many Ghanaians. And fishing is an important part of the economy, and more than 8% of the population are employed in the industry. But the catches are shrinking. One reason is the adherence to traditional fishing methods. Economic analyst Sidney Casley Hayford believes fish farming could be one of the solutions. I think people are taking advantage of fish farming. I think there's a lot there's a lot of uh, tilapia farms coming up and the beauty of it is that they're not using they're not offshore they are using them in the lake and just building containers around them then using that to breed and i can see a lot more uh, of that happening the problem in ghana and many other countries is that many fishermen don't have any alternative for stephen and his brother daniel that means they'll have to continue looking to the sea for their income, despite the challenges. We now head out to Mallorca in Spain. The Spanish island is home to Europe's biggest bird of prey, that's the black vulture. Conservation efforts have managed to save it from extinction, but it's still under threat. Yes, that's right, and a growing number of farmers are quitting livestock production because it's not just profitable anymore. Sheep that have perished on the hills are part of the bird staple diet. And as a result, a declining sheep population means declining vulture numbers. As if effortlessly, they glide for hours in majestic circles with only an occasional flap of their wings. Martin Solivellas regards them as the heroes of the mountains, the black vultures of the Sierra de Tramontana on Mallorca. But their numbers have dwindled. Only 150 of them still live in remote parts of the island. When I was born up here in the mountains, there were lots of black vultures. What impressed me most back then was that birds this big could fly at all. Watching them is quite a show. Mallorca is the only European island where black vultures still live. The carrion feeders live primarily from dead sheep and goats. But the number of sheep and goats up here is dwindling too. Shepherds are increasingly leaving the Sierras. The problem began in the 60s. Many people moved away because working in tourism is easier. That's a problem. Life up here is hard. And you don't earn as much money as elsewhere. When the shepherds leave, the sheep disappear. 
And when the sheep disappear, so do the vultures. Evelyn Tavis cares for injured vultures on Mallorca. She created a foundation to protect the species. When the biologist from Vienna came to the island 30 years ago, the vultures were in even worse straits. There were only about 19 birds and just one breeding pair. Some years it bred and others it didn't. And if no protective measures had been taken, then these birds wouldn't be here anymore. But the black vulture isn't out of the woods yet. Along with the lack of food, tourism is stressing the birds. Increasing numbers of hikers are penetrating even the most remote areas, and that's a problem for these animals. A record 10 million vacationers visited Mallorca last year. Many visit the mountains, and some leave the marked hiking paths. So do Mallorcans, like Javi, whom we met by chance. He wants to spend the night out under the stars and wasn't aware that that could bother the black vultures. I didn't know these birds before. But of course, as a nature lover, I'm sorry that we already harm the black vultures just by being here. It's very sad. A changing human society confronts Mallorca's vultures with fewer meals and more noisy tourists. Martin Solivellas will have to give up shepherding too. He and his wife are starting to prepare for their old age. They want to spend their time with their grandchildren. When I retire, I don't know what will happen to the animals. None of my children wants to follow in my footsteps, like we followed our parents. And that's how it is with most shepherds and their herds. Modern life on Mallorca determines the fate of the black vultures. Already today, many have to be fed. Martin Solivellas says that that's the only way the species will survive here. He hopes his heroes of the mountains will not go extinct. And that's all from us for today. Thank you all for watching this edition of our environmental show Eco at Africa, brought to you by Deutsche Welle, Channels TV and KTN. From the rest of the team in Nairobi, it's bye-bye from us. Until next time. And bye-bye from Ogun State in Nigeria. If you have any stories to tell or photos to post on environmental issues and innovations in green technology, don't hesitate to send us an email or visit our social media sites. You can also comment on our videos there. See you next time and thanks again for watching Air Code Africa. Bye-bye.